Just about every single one of us signs a contract at some point in our lives. Whether it's for a home or a vehicle or it's an employment contract, we all are surrounded by contracts. And one of the important things with contracts is to make sure that you read every clause. Why is this important? Well, obviously you need to know what it is that you're agreeing to. One of the clauses that we're going to talk about today is called the prevailing party clause. I want to explain what it is, what you can do about it, and whether or not it's right for you if you come across it in a contract. Let's first tackle what a prevailing party clause is. A prevailing party clause is a clause in a contract that basically states that if a lawsuit or dispute arises out of the contract, the party that wins the dispute is entitled to reimbursement of his or her attorney's fees. And it's reimbursement from the person that is involved in the dispute. So for example, if John and Mary sign a contract together, and it's a prevailing party clause, and Mary feels that John has breached the contract and Mary sues him, but John wins, Mary is responsible for paying all of John's attorney's fees. That's what the prevailing party clause does. Now, why would anyone in their right mind want a prevailing party clause? What do we use them for? The idea behind a prevailing party clause in a contract is that it's a deterrent, that it will prevent people from, from filing frivolous lawsuits. When you look at the contract and realize that you might be responsible for paying the other side's attorney's fees if you lose, you might be more careful in deciding whether or not you want to sue somebody. Look, I mean, there's no secret that oftentimes people are unhappy with something and they say to themselves, you know, I've got the, the base level, I've got enough of, of grounds to file a lawsuit, so I don't care if I'm going to recover a lot of money or not, I'm just so angry about this, you know, I'm gonna just sue them anyway and see what happens. And even if I get $1,000, it's better than nothing. Now that's not the right way to do things when it comes to legal disputes at all. And I have other videos where I talk about the idea of when you are filing a lawsuit based on my least favorite phrase of all, which is the principle of the thing, or because you're seeking justice, you're already going down the wrong path. So again, the idea behind the prevailing party clause is to prevent people from taking a chance and saying, you know, I'm just going to sue him to punish him and it doesn't matter what I recover. Well, if I see a prevailing party clause and realize I might have to pay their attorney's fees, maybe I won't risk it. That's the purpose behind it. That's the idea behind it. Now, is it a good idea? Well, that depends. It depends if you're the party that prevails or not. You know, when you see a prevailing party clause in a contract, you have to think about it. You have to analyze whether or not you think it's a good idea for you. You know, if, if it's a contract like a, um, an automobile contract, you might want that automobile so much that you're going to sign that because the likelihood that you're going to end up in a dispute with a car dealer where they're going to end up suing you, right, unless you don't pay for the vehicle, it's slim. So in that situation, maybe you'd sign that contract with a prevailing party clause because it probably benefits you. Oftentimes in consumer contracts, if there's a prevailing party clause, it probably benefits you, the consumer, because you're the one who likely is going to have the claim. If you're buying a product from somebody and it doesn't function right, who's the one that's got the claim? You. So you have to analyze the situation that you're in and make a determination as to whether or not signing a prevailing party clause makes sense. Let's say you're signing a partnership agreement. How often do partners end up in legal disputes? And if you don't know, the answer is quite frequently. So if you think that you might end up in a partnership dispute where you both feel you've got equal rights, you might think twice about the inclusion of a prevailing party clause in your contract because one of you is going to win. Maybe you would want to take that out. Now, that's what we're going to talk about next, which is what do you do if you find yourself facing a prevailing party clause and you decide that it's not a good idea to have in the contract? Well, you can try to negotiate it out of the contract completely. So you speak to the other side and you say, listen, let's remove the prevailing party clause and let's make it say that 
if there's a dispute or litigation, that each party is responsible for their own legal fees. That's fair. So maybe you'll get them to agree to that because that's typically what you would do. That's how you would negotiate out of that is that you'd basically say everybody's in, in, you know, responsible for their own attorney's fees. But what if you are ne- trying to negotiate that and the other side says no? All right, well, you can try other tactics. You can say, well, what if we set a cap on what the prevailing party attorney's fees are? And maybe they don't like that. So try, what if we narrowly define what prevailing party means. Maybe prevailing party means that it involves disputes above X amount. So there's a lot of ways for you to be creative in trying to negotiate a more favorable prevailing party clause if you, again, feel that it's not right for you in your contract. What do you do if the other side says no? Nothing. You either sign the contract with the understanding that you are facing a prevailing party clause and that if you bring a lawsuit or dispute and you lose, you're gonna be paying the other side's attorney's fees or you don't sign it. It's as simple as that. One of the more nuanced things is the definition of prevailing party. Some contracts, and not many, but some contracts will define what a prevailing party is. They'll say somebody that you know wins a lawsuit or if there is a settlement, you know, there, you know, the, the the party that is settling or offering to, um, you know, pay a settlement, they are the losing party, and the person receiving the settlement is the prevailing party. But those contracts with that specific definition of prevailing party are few and far between. More often than not, you'll see contracts that just basically say the prevailing party is entitled to attorney's fees. And then that leaves up in the air, what the hell is a prevailing party? What does it mean? Who's a prevailing party? And then that goes into, well, what if I settle the case? So what if you, Sally, sue John, your partners, there's a prevailing party clause, and both of you decide to settle the case? And John says, I want 100,000. And Sally says, I'll give you 80,000. And John says, you know what? I'll take 90. Everybody agrees. Who's the prevailing party there? That's where it becomes tricky because without an explicit definition in the contract, now you're left to decide what, what does prevailing party mean in a settlement setting. And, you know, oftentimes the way that it's resolved is that the attorneys representing each party will simply say, look, a settlement's not going to count. But occasionally you do find that attorney that says, wait a minute, you paid me. I'm the prevailing party. And those matters sometimes end up in litigation. Not, not, it's like a separate litigation. It's like a declaratory judgment action, action within the case to determine whether or not the party that has received a settlement is a prevailing party. There's case law about it, but again, it depends on your state. Every state's different. Some states have case law that says if you settle, there is no prevailing party context. Other states say, well, you know, if you're the one that's paid a settlement and they are the, you know, primary um, beneficiary of the settlement, then maybe you are paying the other side. Maybe they are the prevailing party. So that's where it becomes tricky. So if you are writing a contract, depending upon the nature of the contract, what you need the contract for, you might want to consider more accurately and and narrowly defining what prevailing party means. You can address what it means in a settlement. You can address what it means um, in an arbitration or uh, in in a lawsuit and, and define what that is and you know if you present it to the other side and everybody signs it and agrees and understands it then that would you know theoretically be an enforceable provision so think about that about you know defining what prevailing party clause is but most of us who see these contracts it will just be the generic prevailing party clause so you need to be mindful of the fact that a You know, if you have a prevailing party clause, you shouldn't file a lawsuit just to frustrate the other side. Don't file that lawsuit unless you know you have 
good legal grounds and a good case because if you lose, you might be paying their attorney's fees. And also be aware that if there is a prevailing party clause that's not defined, then you might be arguing at a later date if there is a dispute and it settles about what prevailing party means in the context of a settlement. All right, well, hopefully that helps explain more clearly what a prevailing party clause is in a contract. And uh, if you have uh, any additional questions about that, please leave a comment below. I'll try to get through all the comments that I can. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel, it helps. And it really helps if you, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you are enjoying this content. I greatly appreciate it and everybody else who subscribes to the channel will appreciate it as well. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.